Amen. If you got your Bible, open them to Job, the 16th chapter. And I'm just going to tell you, I don't know how much I have to preach. I've just got a little thought. and uh, But if the Lord will help me, who knows, I might not preach very long, but maybe we could do a swap and we could pray a little longer at the end. How does that sound? Well, how does that sound? Could we make a deal right now and I'll just preach a little while and we can pray for quite a while. Amen. Praise God. Prayer is where, where things start changing in your life. Amen. Praise God. We, we don't need all the knowledge in the world and never apply it and never humble ourselves. And, amen. We need some time around the altars. That's what will change your life. Amen. Job 16, verse 1 and 2, the Bible said, Then Job answered and said, I have heard many such things. If I could just say it like we would say it in Hot Springs. I've heard a lot of stuff. And then he said, miserable comforters are ye all. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And that's what I want to preach about. Miserable comforters. (laughs) Amen. Praise God. Don't get mad at me. Amen. God's good. Set your Bibles down. Lift your hands to the Lord. Amen. Why don't you pray? God, help me right now. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Why don't you cry? Help me tonight, Lord. Help me tonight, God. Strengthen me tonight, God. Oh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Come on, why don't you join up with somebody around you right now? Hallelujah, why don't you pray together? Why don't you let Jesus touch you right now? Oh, we need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Why don't everybody put your hands together for Jesus? Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for standing. You can be seated. Amen. I want to preach about miserable. Everybody say miserable comforters. Amen. In just a few verses in the book of Job, Job loses everything in his life. In just a few verses, he loses his children, he loses his servants, his animals his crops, his health, his wealth, anything that you could say that was of value to Job, Job lost it. Theologians call this unparalleled calamity, which means this hasn't happened to anybody else ever before. Amen. And this did not happen because that Job was a sinner or that Job needed a whipping from God or Job had been doing wrong and God was tired of it. But this simply was a testing of the sincerity of Job and his walk with God. Amen. The Bible describes Job as perfect everybody say perfect everybody say upright amen Job was perfect and upright and trouble happened to Job Job was perfect he was upright and he experienced more suffering than anybody we've ever read about in this Bible amen but in all of this the Bible says And teaches us that Job had an excellent spirit. Praise the Lord. Amen. Maybe we can learn something from Job when we go through the trial 
because he said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Amen. Sometimes when you don't understand what's happened in life, you just need to say, you know what? Uh, though he slay me, though he take everything that is important to me, uh, I don't comprehend it, uh, but I am going to trust God. Uh, his ways uh, are higher than my ways. Uh, his thoughts uh, are higher than my thoughts. Uh, and I'm just going to come to church again uh, like I've always done. Uh, I'm going to come to prayer meeting. Uh, I'm going to have the right spirit. Uh, I'm going to worship uh, when it's worship time. And I'm going to amen when it's preaching time. Hallelujah, everybody clap your hands to the Lord together. Amen, Job understood that his blessing had come from God. He said, naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord hath given and the Lord hath taken away. Uh, but if you keep the right spirit uh, and you keep on reading uh, and you keep on walking, uh, you'll see uh, when you get to the end of the book, uh, God's going to give it all back. Uh, hey, I come to preach to somebody in a trial tonight. Uh, it ain't time to pout. Uh, it ain't time to get a bad spirit. Uh, but it's time to get your shouting shoes on uh, and say, Lord, uh, you're the one that gave it to me. Uh, come on, clap your hands to the Lord together. Amen. Job in this middle, this terrible trial, amen, he has some friends. Thank the Lord for friends. I said, thank God for friends. If you don't have any friends, you're not very friendly, obviously. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Boy, this is good preaching right here. Amen. Maybe you ought to just show yourself friendly. Praise the Lord. Text somebody every now and then. Tell them you're praying for them. Praise the Lord. Boy, this is going over good. Amen. Praise the Lord. Don't be a Lord over them. Be a friend to them. You're not their daddy. You're not their mama and you're not their pastor. Praise the Lord. Boy, this is getting better the further I go. You got to learn how to be somebody's friend. How do you do that? Just show yourself friendly. It's not knucklehead where you been. You miss church Sunday. They may say you're a knucklehead. No, probably what they're going to do is come tell your pastor. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You think, boy, yeah, he knows everything. Well, Job had some friends. And the Bible tells us in Job 2 and 11, when Job's three friends heard of all this evil that was come up on him, they came everyone from his own place. Eliphaz, the Temanite, and Bildad the Shuhite, and Zophar the Namathite, for they had made an appointment together to come to mourn with him and to comfort him. Amen. He had friends that made a special appointment and set some things aside to go help their friend. Praise the Lord. Now you're talking about unheard of. In our world, it's all about me, myself, and I. Praise the Lord. I want to just let that settle in a little bit. Hey Amen. When's the last time you put your schedule aside for a minute to try to help somebody that was going through a mess? Well, praise the Lord. Thank God. Thank God for friends. 
Thank you, Jesus. And when they lifted up their eyes afar off and knew him not, they lifted up their voice and wept, and they rent every one his mantle and sprinkled dust upon their heads toward heaven. So they sat down with him upon the ground seven days and seven nights, and none spake a word unto him, for they saw that his grief was very great. Amen. They made an appointment. This is what they wanted to do. In their heart, their motive was, we need to comfort Job. Man, Job. Job is in a mess right now. He was the richest man in the east is what the Bible describes. Amen. And now he's the brokest man in the east. And he ain't got nothing but a Jezebel wife. That's about all he had to his name at that point. And these friends, they said it in their heart. We need to go and we need to comfort our friend Job. Amen. Thank the Lord for friends. Amen. But then you began to read the book of Job. And oh my. Praise the Lord. These friends began to ramble for hours. They began to speak philosophically to Job. They began to question why all this was happening in their friend's life. Amen. And if you've ever read it, maybe after reading a chapter of the response of one of these friends, you looked up and you thought, what are these people saying? What are these people even talking about? Amen. But their purpose was... They wanted to comfort their friend. And so from the second chapter all the way through the 15th chapter, they're sitting around their friend that's in a total wreck of a life. And they're doing everything they know to do to make him feel better. Praise the Lord. Amen. They get an E for effort maybe. Amen. Because when you began the 16th chapter, after listening to 14 chapters of his friends trying to act like Socrates, he gets to the point where he says, you know what? I've heard a lot of stuff. I'm telling you, when I read it, I got to the point where I, I would have said, I've read a lot of stuff. Amen. But And Job said, I've heard it, but I've got something to tell you. Y'all are miserable comforters. Thank you, Jesus. And that's what I want to preach about for just a few minutes. About some old miserable comforters. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let me tell you, when your life is in a mess... Thank God for friends. Thank God for people. Man, we went to the funeral of Sister Stroud's grandson just a few days ago. Flowers all over the front of that place and cards and people talking about what a good young man, talking about his baptism, talking about him seeking God and Everybody loved him and people were going up to family and saying all kinds of good stuff. And we are so thankful for people that will do that. Amen. This is a loving church. Praise the Lord. I said this is a loving church. Amen. You ought to try to help people out when it's in your ability to help out. You ought to try to take the load sometimes when it's in your ability to take the load. Amen. But let me tell you what I want to preach about, what the Lord dealt with me about the other day, is that not that friends are miserable comforters, 
per se, but when you begin to compare what friends can do with what the comforter can do, Jesus said, I will send you the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. Uh, when you repent of your sins uh, and get baptized in Jesus' name, there is a promise. Uh, and that promise is uh, that God will fill you uh, with the Holy Ghost. Uh, and he described the Holy Ghost uh, as the uh, comforter. Come on, lift your hands to the Lord together. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. The apostle Paul told Timothy, stir up the gift that is within you. How did he say you got it, Timothy? You got it by the laying on of hands. Let me tell you, probably when you got the Holy Ghost, there was a bunch of people around you. There was probably a bunch of people helping you. There might have been a minister with his hands on your head. Amen. I don't know exactly how it happened, but you got the comforter. Amen. Amen, but just because you got the comforter don't mean you're not going to go through a trial because Paul says, Timothy, we have not been given the spirit of fear. Why do you speak that to Timothy today? Uh, because Timothy uh, is in a trial, uh, and obviously uh, there's something come against him, uh, and he's fearful. Uh, and he said, the first time you got the Holy Ghost, you got it by the laying on of hands. But now, Timothy, stir up that gift. You know what he was saying, which he wasn't saying. You don't have to have, you don't have to have somebody. Oh, I'm fixing to preach the gospel to this church. Uh, amen. You don't have to have somebody with their hands on your head all the time. Uh, you got a gift in you. Uh, it's called uh, the Holy Ghost. Uh, and when you're feeling fearful, uh, come on, church. Uh, Amen. There is a powerful thing that is inside of you that if you begin to reach for God. How do you make this happen? You just got to stir it up. You, it'll, it'll go to sleep on you. It'll lay down on you. But you got to say, oh, come on, Holy Ghost. Come on, Holy Ghost. Come on, Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Praise God. If you ever get a hold of this, you'll quit reaching for the help that men can give to you. Praise the Lord. Oh, Jesus. I've talked to people on the phone before, and it is my job to talk to people on the phone, and I love to talk to people on the phone. I love to hear about problems. Praise the Lord. Amen. But I've talked to people who had problems, and in the conversation, they allude to the fact that they just got off the phone with somebody else. Tell them about what happened. And then by the time they get off the phone with me, my wife's phone rings. And I can hear the same story that I know has been told three times <laughs> to miserable comforters. There's only so much man can do for you. There's only so many words we can say uh, to help comfort you. Uh, but there's another level. Uh, I said there's another level. Uh, hey man, the, That if you could break through in the Holy Ghost, if you would say, I'm not going to be denied tonight. I'm going to get what I came for. I'm telling you, you'll leave a different person. You'll leave with a pep in your step. You'll leave full of faith. Come on, 
Come, church, help me pray right now. Help me pray right now. Help me pray. Lift your hands to God. Come on, really pray right now. Really pray right now. Really pray. If you want to be comforted, really pray right now. Yes, Lord. 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 Come on, it's time to get off your cell phone and get on the altar. It's time to get off of Facebook and get back on the altar. It's time to get off the internet uh, and get back on the altar. Uh, hey, uh, well, if he would just say a nice little word to me. Uh, hey, if you would just let the Holy Ghost uh, knock you in the floor, uh, it'll fix all your problems. Come on, do you want a Band-Aid uh, or do you want God to do surgery? Uh, do you want somebody to pat you on the back uh, or do you want God? to fix your problem. Shut up, ba 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 kata ya la ba. Shata la ba 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 kata ya la ba ho shata. Yila ya 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 siya. Tala ba siya. Thank the Lord, thank the Lord. Come on, just keep praying. Thank the Lord for every card, every good thing, every text. Sister Charlene Stroud, thank God for every phone call people's made to you, every text they gave to you. But it don't compare to what will happen if you get out in that aisle tonight and the Holy Ghost falls on you. Come on, church. Come on, church. People in real trials, they, they don't need a, a monologue. Uh, they don't need monologue. They need the Holy Ghost. Uh, they don't need enticing words of men's wisdom, uh, but they need a demonstration of the Spirit. Come on, church. People with chains, they don't need to be talked about the weather. They need the Holy Ghost to break the chains. Come on, come on, there's healing in this house right now. Come on, in Jesus' name.
Come on, you don't need to stay on the phone all day long again. You need a Holy Ghost prayer meeting right now. Yeah, Lord. Yea, Lord. Yea, Lord. Yea, la 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 da baka. Ye to 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 bo shatatata. Ye to lo bo shatataya. Come on, there's only so much man can do for you. But if you'll break through in the Holy Ghost, all things are possible. Shotola ba 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 ya. Come on, help somebody get a breakthrough right now. Come on, it's breakthrough time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. He told no more shataya. He told no more satata. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Come on, something's breaking right now. Something's breaking in this place. Come on, baba baba Come on, let the real comforter. Come on, let the real comforter get a hold of you right now. Stir up the real comforter. Stir up the real one. <laughs> Come on, 